There's a formula to it. A very simple formula. Everybody's a suspect. Guitar, a statement on modern society. Ooh, ain't modern society awful? They're coming to get you, Barbara. Hello, and welcome back to the Cabin Light Podcast. I'm James. I'm Rob. I'm Jake. And in today's episode, we are doing another album review, of other, rather, another album ranking of another band we all like, some to different degrees to others, but we all agree that we quite like this band to some level. And that is Disturbed. We shall get to talking about them a little bit more momentarily. But before we do, I'd like you to... Get yourself a drink, sit back, and enjoy the discussion. So, Disturbed, an al- uh, a band that we can all agree that, that again, we like to some some differing levels, but we all mm-hmm. quite like Disturbed. Uh, they mean a lot to me. I will openly yeah. admit straight away that they are one of my favourite bands. I would say for a long time they were my they were my favourite band. They are still up there for me, but I've discovered other things that I re- also really like. Um, but Disturbed for a long time my favourite band, and I discovered them at a very formative time in my music education. So they've always got a special place for me. And I think we all sort of latch on to different areas of the band. And like Slipknot, they've got quite a few albums. Uh, they've got seven albums out currently. They have Sickness, Believe, 10,000 Fists, Indestructible, Asylum, Immortalised and Evolution with their new album coming out some point in the future. Uh, I think August is where it's currently released. If they haven't got a title for it or a date yet. They've just released a new song for that called Hey You which we may talk about in a little bit, but it doesn't really impact our discussion today. So, like with Slipknot and with Ghost, we're going to try and rank them. We're going to go through every album individually, say what we like about it, what we don't like about it, and then as a cabin night, we are going to try and rank them. So it's not our individual rankings, it is what we can agree on. As with Slipknot, we'll also be adding a playlist based on our individual favourite songs from each album. Mm -hmm. So, we shall start at the very beginning. It is a very good place to start. It's the best place to start. It is. Spoiler alert. Yes. (laughs) So, we shall start with The Sickness, uh, released in the year 2000. I can't remember what the singles were off the top of my head, but... I'm they were. Oh, Rob, Rob has done research. He's done Voices. research again. No, research shit, again. In, shit in hell. Uh, they like, were not... Stupefy, mm-hmm. Down With The Sickness, Voices, and The Game. In that order? In that order, apparently. Huh. Apparently, in that Interesting, order. Interesting, because I thought sick, Down With The Sickness was the last one, because... I thought Voices was first, to be honest. I thought Voices no, was I knew, first. No, I knew Stupefy. I thought when Stupefy, Voices, and then The Sickness, I didn't realise we actually released The Game as a single. Because I remember... I remember going to buy Voices, the single. I remember going to buy it. I remember where I was. I remember what the single looked like. Showing your age now. Again, with us being in the UK, a lot of the a lot of the industry, sorry, industry, a lot of the information we can find will be pertinent to the American market. So it could yeah. be that a lot of the stuff we're looking into in that respect yeah. is regards be, to yeah. them. Not so, so it could be that the order changed over here. It could be that they did release the next single over there and not over here yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Sickness. So, what, what, what do you think to the album? What, 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 what are our thoughts and opinions on the sickness? I have done a thing in in recent years where I, know, I can I've... see the brown stain coming out. I've done a thing, James. <laughs> I need to put this chair out. It's cream that chair, or it was cream. <laughs> need no, it's colour. chocolate cream. <laughs> anyway, it smells as well. I'm sorry. In this hot. Oh, cab- this oh, the hottest day of the sodding cab- year. <laughs> Go on. Sorry. Uh, no. Um, I've done this thing in in recent times when I've got into a band and and I've listened. I think I've been I, I've known about them since I got into metal because they were a band that were always on scores. I believe Prayer was the one that was doing the rounds at the time. Mm-hmm. So I would say my introduction to Disturbed was Believe, yeah, and I then properly got into them for Indestructible, mm-hmm. which is a great album. So when I do get into a band, I, I tend to do a thing where I. I struggle to get onto anything else yeah, yeah as much as i try hmm. as you know i'm i'm in the ramstein thing at the minute i can't get past. You can't, you i can't gone. physically put anything else on it's like if i'm doing anything that's what's going on and i did it we we disturbed and after the indestructible thing wore off i listened to nothing but the sickness for months and i loved it i thought the sickness was such a good album and it's probably because it is it's like it's a a style of singing that's quite unique you could certainly mm. say, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and 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 I can I can put a pin in exactly what it is, and it's voices, and it's the bit after again just before the or during the break if you like, 
where he's saying, uh, I can hear other voices, but I don't want to listen. Strap me down and tell me I'll be all right. Mm. I can feel the subliminal need to be one with the voice to make everything all right, yeah. That, it's just such a, it's iconic to me. Mm. People go on about the song Down With The Sickness, which is great. It's if a good song. It live and it's a good blah, blah, blah. song. <laughs> but, so I would argue it doesn't have the right tempo for a pit song. I just, I, I just think, a, mo- yeah, a, a, a moving, a, a, a moving yeah. song. At court, I've, I've pitted to it many times. Yeah, I would argue, I would argue it's not fast enough to be pitted song. It's a moving song, yeah. definitely. But, but I think, pit. but when when I started pitting as such, it wasn't necessarily about the speed. It was about I'm going to take you out. So it doesn't matter what speed the music's okay. at. I'm going that way, and that's where I'm going. And that's mm. if you're in my way, that doesn't matter. Okay. The pushing and the shoving bit was more of not the sort of circly pits and all that sort of stuff. Again, show my age. When I went to Kitty Corp, there was a whole ritual that yeah. we were down with the sickness. As, as your wife will be able yeah, to will, yeah, testify. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we probably bumped into each other without realizing. Obviously, yeah, we didn't yeah. know who each other were at the time. But yeah, there was a whole ritual that went with them um, down with the sickness. Right? Oh god, yeah. It involved. If I remember right, bear in mind, I'm, I'm a much older man now. Not as old as him, but I'm yeah. a much older man now. Um, yeah, it is. There's the yeah, it's in, it's in one per, at least one per episode. There was a whole ritual where the old. If I remember right, because Kitty Corp was like, if you were under eighteen, you could go to Corp uh, between like. When I went, it was five to eight. I know it was originally yeah. six to nine, then it was five to eight, then yeah, yeah. four to seven, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, when I went, it was five to eight. And the ritual was that the older kids, who were sort of like seven, 16, 17, some were 18 and 19, yeah, yeah. Um, but they sort of stood in the middle and moshed and stuff like that, and all the others got around the outside, just head, basically just, basically just head banging. Yeah. And that was kind of, but you made a perfect circle around them. It was like a whole ritual. There was everything to, in Kitty Court, most songs had some form of ritual or things that were so like sugar cult bouncing off the walls yeah. everyone moved back and tried to bat, jump as far as they could off the wall Yeah. how more people didn't get injured I don't um, know the, the uh, drowning pool uh, let the bodies at the floor people doing the, the one two three yeah. oh yeah and, uh, and do hast you, um, for every do you put a middle finger up so yeah. do do hast do hast miss, do hast and the same same with um, well, it's so, a bit cringe really isn't it oh it was we were kids <laughs> we, were, we were mini moshes we, we, yeah. were mini, we were mini moshes we didn't know, we didn't know any better what was our original point <laughs> The sickness. The sickness. sickness in general. Yes. So yeah, I think yeah, down with the sickness is a good song. It is a good song, but I think they were far stronger on that. Uh, it is a bit. Yeah. I would argue now the sickness is the actual song. Down with the sickness is far overplayed. I think yeah. it's anthemic songs that Disturbed have. I would argue it's down the. I don't think it's. Like, I don't. I don't think it's that anthemic. I, I, I agree. I, I think. It, I think it, it's. It's perfect place in the set now. Is the end of the. Set. It's the end of the set. I think it's one that everybody knows, and yeah. and I would I would say as well that the the appeal of that song is far more than the song itself. The appeal of that song is its introduction into into cinema. Night of the, the Day of the Dead. Day of the Dead. No, Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead. Dawn of the Dead. The, the remake. Yeah. Oh, it's in that, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, that was that came out quite a few years after the album, but, though. But Met- metal, metal yeah, yeah, early, yeah. early two thousand new metal in cinema was a big thing. Yeah. Like you got Rob Zombie, mm. you got Reggie Against the Machine, yeah. Marilyn Manson. Mm. Oh, See, okay. For me, I, w- I was a new metal kid. Mm. I got into metal about 1998-ish, 99. When I was but a wee ten-year-old. <laughs> so, I was I, I, I was a, a new metal kid th- through and through. All the other new metal stuff had a, had a certain thing to it, and Disturbed didn't have that. They were different. They were new. They had the de- don't they have the they were, decks. They were class. They were class as new they, metal. They were. Yeah, they, yeah. I, I, and I don't disagree that they aren't new metal. I think they are, or they certainly were. They at were that, at that point. Uh, I'd argue they're not anymore. But they at, were at, at that, that point. point, they were. But they were different new metal. They were. How is it that they were so clearly part of that movement? They're not now, and yet their sound hasn't really evolved <laughs> that much. Yeah, the sound has definitely. The sound, like the sound has evolved. The sound. It's still very Bits distinctly disturbed. No, it's still very distinctly disturbed, but it's still evolved. I think as as more so than Slipknot, you can put any disturbed song on and be like, "It's disturbed that." That's his voice, I think. Yeah, yeah. That, that's more. Yeah, it's more his vocals rather than the actual song. Yeah, I suppose I'd, that's it. Then that's a difference. I think uh, instrumentally, yeah, for the want of the better term, the 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 hit of disturbed that goes around on YouTube. Yeah, like they've lost a lot of that. Did it? Da, 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 da. It's, it's the staccato delivery, yeah. yeah that's that in, has in the guitars, in, in Dan Rodriguez's guitars, they've lost a lot of that. I think. And his vocal, his vocals, isn't he's not quite a staccato no. anymore. These vocals, no. there's elements that still pop yeah, up yeah. now and again. Hey, you, the verse is very old school disturbed. Yeah. Why the verse is better than the chorus? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think you should have just just done the verse all the way through the song. <laughs> yeah. I, I liked the 
the chip. The I do like that that mix. The but this, yeah, this is the new era. That we'll get onto when we get onto evolution. Yeah. I think, but yeah, that's the new era of the newest era of disturbed. But yeah, so I think does does sickness stand the test of time? Do you think absolutely? Do you it's, think? Do you think if you were to give someone who's just getting into rock and metal now, if you were to give them the sickness, do you think they'd you know they'd latch onto it, or do you think? If you were getting into metal under a disaster recommendation, then yeah, absolutely. I think it for me it'd have to be, I'd have to get to know them. I think I don't think I could just give them this. Okay, all right. Uh, if somebody said like, if somebody said oh, I've bought this album, and it's whatever it is, to my Linkin Park or whatever, mm. I, I wouldn't necessarily jump to Disturbed. Yeah, I'd try and gather mm. a bit. What do you like about that? And yeah. Whether that bit might fit. Mm. For me. Get, I haven't. I I wouldn't put forward down with the sickness as a as a. No, I'd, as I a wouldn't. Even though it's a song everyone sort of associates with, yeah. it's not the song I would recommend from that album. It's I, so I, again. I've again. I've picked three in case. I've you know, picked three for the, for the purposes of other yeah. people picking. I mean, I could pick a lot more, but I've got one that is a Stone Cold favorite. I've got favorite disturbed song. I think I think mine and yours is the same. Same one, yeah. I'd got one, two, three. I'd got six that were for me sort of standout ish. Okay. Voices, Stupefy, Violence, Fetish, Conflict, Dropping Plates. And I don't know why Dropping Plates, but I just really like Dropping it. Dropping Plates is, is, quite, is, yeah. it, it's quite a fun song. But it's it? completely really like different on that yeah. album. Conflict's got... I, I love um, I love Fear. Meaning of Life. Mean, of Meaning of Life is an amazing. Yeah. Meaning of Life is amazing. Well, it's really funny because they released it on Rock Band and listening to Emma try and do Meaning of Life in her angelic voice mm. is hilarious. <laughs> Absolutely I fucking hilarious. Shout's a good cover as well. It is a good cover. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think, yeah, I think something else needs to be said for Disturbed's yeah, covers. Disturbed do good covers. Most of the time. <laughs> we will get on to that, but Disturbed do good covers most of the time. Um, yeah, well, I'm sure other songs will come up, but yeah, the Shout 2000 is, I would argue, is better than the original. Better than the original Taste of Sears. I like Taste of Fears. Again, in a couple of albums time when we get to... Yes, that, 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 yes, and also that's covered that we'll have to talk about when we get there because everyone knows that one. So, okay, so if we're going to pick one song for Sickness, what, what, what would your recommendation be? I'll let you choose because I have that backup. Well, you've got backups. I've got backups. Too. Mine will be Voices. There's no doubt about it. Well, your Voices. My number one. I'm, I'm curious to know what you pick before I say mine. Uh, I've got... My, what, my three were Voices. Mm-hmm. Conflict mm-hmm. and meaning of life. So, what are you picking? Conflict. Interesting. Good drums in conflict. Mm-hmm. I love fear. I think fear is one of the first like proper bouncy songs they had mm-hmm. as well. And meaning of life is amazing. But stupefy. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Stupefy needs Sorry's to be on that list. I think that I think they're they're great voices and stupefy. Mm. I mean, I know it was all recorded at the same time, but they are almost one song, I think. Like, yeah. recorded very much. Again, a bit like I said with Vermillion having two sides yeah. of the coin. For a different reason, I think, yeah, yeah Voices and Stupefy are two sides of a, they've both, a very strange coin. They've both, they're both very distinctive. They've got distinctive guitars in yeah. them, they've got distinctive drums in mm. it, but they're very similar yeah. in those distinctive bits. But, but I'd argue that the only real low point on sickness is numb mm. i think numb is the only song we kind of go oh this is a bit i'm this not a, as, this, I'm, this is a, this is a bit of a fit this is uh we're padding out the time yeah. a little bit more isn't it i'm not as keen on fear i'm really not but i am not the most massive disturbed fan ever and i did sort of i definitely stopped listening after believe for a bit mm. i think a lot of i think a lot and of people I came did. back at asylum mm. and then I didn't. Listen, I haven't listened to anything since the album. Until we say we're going to do this. So, until we say we're going to do this. Right. So, the last two albums, certainly, Immortalised and Evolution, I have only listened to once and very recently. Mm. Interesting bit of fact about Fear, if I've got the track right. It was actually when they were holding auditions, because Disturbed originally started as a band called Brawl, which yeah. is a dreadful name. Um, Back when he had hair. Well, no, it wasn't David. It wasn't David Inham. Oh, yeah. right. It wasn't. It wasn't David Inham. It was Dan, Mike, and Fuzz, the original bassist, and they'd lost their original singer. And said, "Well, we want a new singer to put an out in Chicago." So we want a new singer, and David came along and said, "Every singer they'd seen that day wanted to do a cover of whatever you know. I'll do Metallica, do Megadeth, and they were bored of playing covers." And David was the only person who went in and said, "Well, play me some of your songs. What are you? What are you playing? What are you playing?" So Dan went, "Oh, okay." So Dan started 
playing a riff he was working on and then David listened to it for a few minutes and went right okay and just basically riffed and basically just came up with lyrics on the spot and that song eventually became Fear. Fear. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's cool. And that that's one reason why they picked David because he was the only one who's ready to go with original material. No, he went, no, I want to hear what Brawl is. I don't want to hear Megatallica or Megadeth yeah. or whatever. Don't I want to hear you. what Brawl is. Yeah. And apparently his first decision was, so we're changing the name, right? Because Brawl <laughs> is awful. I, was just, I think they did like two or three shows as Brawl and then changed yeah. it. I would love them to this day. Do you know how like Machine Head do Tent on Hammer shows yeah. and Bullet do... Jack Hill Jam. Jack Hill, Matt Kill Jam. Fighters do it as well. They've done it. Yeah, well, what's their alter ego it's about? Like hot dogs or something. Yeah. Something stupid. Green, uh, Green Day have done as uh, Fox were hot tubs or whatever it is. No, that was a, that was a band. It was Green Day, but it was a band. Oh, right. That wasn't a... We play shows as these. Oh, they right. recorded an album. Or secret shows, yeah. Yeah. They did the network as well, which was also a secret... Mm-hmm. Food but fighters, they have done it. Food fighters could now do it as Dream Widow, couldn't they? Yeah, if they yeah. wanted to. But yeah, so I'd love them to do like secret shows as Brawl, just to yeah. see, just to see how many people would kind of t- turn up. But yeah, so I think that, I think they're three. I think they're three good picks. I think that's a. Metallica like would be metal up your ass, right? <laughs> yeah. Or they'd be Dahan as you. Dahan, uh, which uh, is the kid that played in the film mm. for the Never. So on to believe released in two thousand and two. This is the... this was the album that got me into. Disturbed. Do you want the singles? Uh, the singles, if I can remember rightly, were Prayer, Remember, and Liberate. They were indeed. Yeah, this is the album that got me into the stuff. I remember vividly seeing the Prayer video for the yeah. first time. And he's having, walking down the street. Yeah, and it having such a, shit's blowing up around me. Yeah. such a profound impact. Because I was only just starting to get into metal at that yeah. point. So what year was this then? It's 2002. 2002. It's, a 2000. Oh, it's still long before I had it, but I remember... Prayer being the first disturbed video I'd seen. I, I remember, vi- I remember vividly it having such a profound impact on me and my musical taste, mm. and just connecting so much with it. It's a much, I think we can all agree, it's a much, for lack of a better term, softer, mellow mm. album mm. than um, Signal. Yeah, look at such as the song. It's liberate. It's liberate. It's a, there as... Liberate is a kind of a, almost a tribute to the original Sickness yeah. I far. Yeah. It's them it trying could, to explore the more. Yeah. I feel like the whole album, and this isn't a dig. The whole album is almost a response to people saying, "Oh, we'll disturb, just do one thing." Yeah. The whole album is going, "No, we can do melodies. We can do more tuneful, more." Yeah. But again, we use the term radio-friendly yeah. songs because you know, Bar Liberate, there's no swearing on that album. No. There's no. It's a complete. It's almost a complete swear-free album. Which is, album, which is weird that they've still released it as a single. Again, that, I think I think it was to pr- again. It was almost to prove. To all the disturbed nay- naysayers going, oh, look, we're still, we still have that bike, we still yeah, have that. Yeah, we can bed. still do this. We, yeah, so, so I believe it's, ca- a, it's much more of a. I don't want to say generic because I don't mean generic. I mean, sickness. It jumps around a lot in the style of song that they mm. play. Still distinctively disturbed at that point, but whereas this one just seems to be the same form. It, it, yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. It's not hundred dis- percent, but. No, it, they've, they've got a style for this album. They've just it? gone, right, this is what we're going to do on this mm. album. There's a little bit of movement, but not much. The style of Believe is still felt on every every other album. So, oh, this is the kind of Believe type yeah. song. So it's still felt to this day what they did. I was, I'll say this now, Believe is my personal favourite album. It's not their best, it's yeah. not my number one, but it's my it's my favourite album. But I'll admit it's not their best album. Is that because it's, that's when you've got into Yeah, I mean, the personal. actual album itself means a lot to me. Yeah. Um, and and that's that's the big thing into the nostalgia is it? it but I'll admit, so you but I credit it because it got you into them. But I admit it's not their best album. Yeah, on on that pretty much on the back of that. I mean, it's got some fantastic songs. It's got one of my favourite Disturbed songs on it, which is Darkness. Darkness. Darkness is amazing. Again, and that's the first time we've showcased being showcased. What an incredible voice he's got when vo- he sings. Voice is he's songwriting such ability, such and again, voice. the rest of the band proving that they're not mm. just going to. Blast it out! They can, yeah, they can, they can, do. they can do the technical things as well. This is obviously also the start of the breakdown in communication between, um, mainly between David and Fuzz, mm. the bassist. He left after this. T- I think he left not at the end of the tour. I think he left about most like part way through the touring cycle as well. Um, so disturbed as his original form ended after this album. Yeah. Um, so that could also be a reason why it's quite a strong shift to the next album. When we get mm. to it. Tough one for me because it, it, despite it having one of my favorite disturbed songs on it, it is it features very low down for me for the reasons that you've mentioned. It is it's a quite low for me. It's a noticeably different. It's the album, album to what I loved about Sickness. If yeah. it's an album that if you were to line all the albums up, it's the one that's the least disturbed. Mm. Yeah. Again, it's not a bad mm. album. 
No, I, I don't mm-hmm. think it's the least. I disturbed. agree with that. It's right. the least disturbed. It's not the worst. No, it's not the least. It's the least disturbed. I think the the other the other close for that one is Evolution. I've, I've really, really, I've listened to that yeah, today. It's a good album. And I think that is the least. So they've gone, they've gone far too far in the melody side on that one. For me. Well, we get to evolution, yeah. but but it's but it's a natural evolution yes. of their sound. It's I still get very it. Distinct. I get it. <laughs> yeah, but they've, they, I think they've evolved a little bit too far in one direction. They should have kept a little bit more of. So yeah, we'll, we'll get to we'll, we'll, we'll get to we'll get we'll sound belief. I'm going to argue we are, we are yeah. on this one as well. Um, bear right. in mind, I've only listened to it once. I mean, I've only listened to it once. I'm only listening to it last once. Mm. So just just bear that in mind. I'm not. The but yeah, I think believe seasoned veteran. believe was trying to do something slightly different to sickness and didn't did al- didn't always hit. But I think just so, looking looking through the all all track listing, you could have probably told us this already, James. But as soon as we like to have a little interesting fact, mm. it's the only disturbed album uh, with every track being a one, one word one word title. Yep. Mm. I think sorry, that was more, I just ruined something. That you no, no, no. I I I think that's more coincidence. I think yeah. rather than the purposely I really that. liked Awaken Awaken's good uh, Remember I like Remember not, yeah not by them <laughs> not by Deathlock <laughs> I like Remember and I liked Intoxication I thought that was really good so what are you picking Emerald Kill Me If I Don't Pick It So Liberate <laughs> that's a good song <laughs> James Epic's Darkness by the way yeah. <sighs> I, I'm generally struggling because again this album means so much to me yeah, I'm yeah. Generally struggling. the three standouts for me are Prayer Remember and believe the title track. Yeah, I think it's a song that they barely ever play live now. In fact, the only song they tend to play from this album is Prayer. Mm. They'll occasionally play Remember, but it's normally Prayer. I've seen them play Liberate though. Not recently. Since since the more when we saw um, on the inside. Uh, oh, and the instructional tour they played Liberate, play but them. now since Immortalizers, if they don't play, so I remember you losing your shit when <laughs> Liberate came. <laughs> Oh, I, loved, I lost my shit a lot that night. Because <laughs> they were far better when we saw the Indestructible Tour than when I saw them on the 10,000 Fist Tour. They were far better. But then again, I think the Apollo as a venue is far better than the Academy. Depends on the band. Yeah, I... For, okay, for Disturbed, they were better at the Apollo. Yeah. Yeah. I think, without wanting to pick on bands, I think if you sing in a band, I think the Apollo is a better gig. If you are a... Yeah, no, no, no I get what you The screamy... It's better for pits as well. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. Well, I've been in, I've been in plenty of piss in Academy. Mm. <laughs> no, I get no, I get Academy. What I mean, Academy. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I think we're gonna have to press for this one now. I think remember if you push me, it's remember. It is on the list. It is done. It's so done the only one of those three that I didn't pick as a standout track is Darren. Such a good song. Dar- for years, Incredible for thing, years, yeah. he refused to accept that was ballad. Uh, yeah, literally, yeah. It, yeah, it, it's only yeah, exactly. Oh, someone about the ballad? It's not a ballad. It's a ballad, it's not a ballad. It's literally only in the past few years he's gone, yeah, I was a dick, that was a fucking ballad. <laughs> but, but again... And, and he come out recently as as apologising to, to Justin just Hawkins yeah. as well, yeah. saying, I, yeah, I probably did say some stuff to him. Tell you what, for, I'm looking forward to that Darkness Disturbed song. I'm looking forward to this crossover. <laughs> That's going to be, yeah, Amazon all that, ain't you? I believe in a thing called... Wah! <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be on the, uh, yeah. on the trailer. That's going to be on the trailer. <laughs> um, but yeah, so... I, yeah, I I think yeah, just I think believe is a yeah, it's my personal. But I, it's a hard, it's a really hard one for me to do believe. Um, really really hard one. So then we move on to Ten Thousand Fists, which is the start of the new era of Disturbed. They had the new bassist and in a, a notably low point, uh, critically speaking. They were getting a lot of hate by the time Ten Thousand Fists came. They were. I really like this album. They were the Nickelback of their time. I think Disturbed mm. when Ten Thousand Fists people like to hate it. Like. Ten thousand fish. I remember was getting one star reviews everywhere, one star reviews because it was it was fashionable to hate ten thousand yeah. fish. It was fashionable to hate the stuff. Oh, because they were just the band that did the noises. Yeah, it's Com- fashionable to hate Ghost, but critically speaking, they do incredibly well. But Ghost have the album sales to back it up, so it's mm, so yeah. critics critics have to jump on board with this. Yeah, yeah. Whereas Disturbed weren't doing that well mm, financially. I, I mean, I think they're still doing all right because you know. They're still here, so, yeah. you know. But yeah, so Ten Thousand Fists came out in two thousand and five. Oh, don't tell me. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to do it all off my head. I've got more. Huh? Yeah. What were the singles on this one then? It was, it was stricken, well, guarded. Was they were other way around? Guarded yeah, guarded was like a promo thing. The stricken yeah. was the first. Then yeah. did just stop come out next. Then land of confusion, and did they have another one after that? Did they? Ten Thousand Fists, according to what I found. Ah. 
Again, I think it was a bit like Garza sort of promo singer. Yeah. Again, I saw them on the one night, the 10,000 Fists tour, where they didn't play 10,000 Fists. And that is such a good song. Oh, it is amazing. Song. It is, that I, is... I think, again, it's, uh, as I mentioned with Darkness on the last album, on this album, the the Justin Hawkins, David German show, song that they do should be Darkness. <laughs> Yeah, that, that took me a couple of seconds. <laughs> see what I did there? What were I saying? <laughs> about 10,000 Fists. Yeah, I know, because that's the album we're on, but I can't remember what I was saying about 10,000 Fists. Is it called? Uh, yeah, it's. Sorry, I'm with you. Like Darkness on the last album, it showcases what an incredible singer he is with the. He's got a range. The, but, but in a more metal sense this time, mm. as opposed to a singing sense. It's, I'd argue 10,000 Fists, the song at least, is probably the closest they ever got to power metal. Could be argued. I, I again, I love Ten Thousand the song because I love call to arm songs. Like, mm-hmm. like we said, we Slipknot, like surfacing yeah. and things it's like the that. Moment that you know that and you, you, you fit, yeah, that. and being part of the crowd that throws yeah. Ten Thousand Fist or if in the Apollo three hundred. But that's like, <laughs> <laughs> well, how many were there? Don't I? Certainly weren't ten thousand. Yeah, it weren't ten thousand. They tried to find a halfway point between believe and sickness. I find on this album still quite melodic yeah. and still. Um, very tuneful and still technically I think Dan Donegan's coming on leap every album yeah. Dan Donegan comes on leaps and bounds um, as a guitar player and the, as writers as well I think they're, they're starting to tackle more interesting themes some are still very surface lovely stuff but they're starting to tackle this, they, they're developing all their skills anarchy at the start weren't it because this is uh, yeah they're, they're becoming much more mindful of what they're doing they, now. they're not just telling us they're angry at the establishment they're telling us why they're angry at yeah, the establishment the, <laughs> and specific parts of yeah, angry. It's, yeah it's not just anger it's Mm. Specific yeah, anger at yeah, exactly. something. So yeah, again, so it's the first album with their new bassist John, who originally came from Union Underground. Union Underground, yes, Union Underground, uh, and then is that Tony Iommi on, on album cover? What above the guy's head? Oh, there's lots of cameos. There's there's meant to be lots of cartoons. So the ten thousand <laughs> fist, the ten thousand fist cover is all based. Done by Todd McFarlane, who did Spawn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and obviously the guy who's the incredible artist as well. Incredible, dreadful writer. Is it the first artist. one with the guy on it? It isn't it. Officially, yes. The guy appears on the CD for Sickness. Yes, but because it's like a, a referral to an asylum, isn't it? Thing uh, uh, the the CD. It's almost like it's got a stamp to say you know, yeah. this person's declared insane. No, the CD. The CD is because the guy, the drawing of the guy. There was one for each member of the band. I shall show you on the CD. Because uh, oh, I, I feel like I'm. Where is I can't. I don't want to read it. So if I. So the CD. It's got a version of the guy for each member of the band. Oh yeah. So that's the one that everyone knows. So obviously that's the David one. So they just cut off the uh, the chin piercings, yeah. and that became that became the guy. Um, you think of the penis head on the front. <laughs> of the I remember my dad sat on like that. <laughs> what you tell him? And he got his hoodie. He got a hoodie on, so I just zipped it up <laughs> to his nose like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's the guy from the surf. <laughs> so yeah, it's the first one when he appears as we all know him as the guy with sort of yeah. the hoods and the chains and things oh, like that. that. I was at the it comic book it, video for a bit London Confusion, which is also done by Tom McFarlane. Is the guy not on Believe then at all? No, it's just it's the Believe symbol on yeah. Believe. I didn't know if we're on like the back or anything no, like that. No, because no, it's just the it's just red into it. And it's just got the little the symbol. It, it's it's it. red with a silver symbol, yeah. and then in the booklet. It's because the belief symbol is lots of different uh, religious iconography all yeah, yeah. mixed up. Mm. So the booklet is just them all individually. Yeah. So yeah, so the guy, it's the first time the guy appears as we know him, uh, which is the mascot, which again I think is another interesting topic for a... a well, um, I was just thinking about this, show. but I do think to add, add it on to that is I was just thinking on the last bit um, about things you can come to expect from a band live and... The go home song is one, so maybe we can compile this into into one episode. But you know, scream for me, Donington from Maiden. Yeah. Uh, we are all disturbed, mm-hmm. disturbed. Uh, get jump the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. I think it all works nicely. Yeah, so uh, we, sing, are sing. we play rock and roll. Yeah, so I've, got to cha- I've gone to change my bass. I've still got the same bass. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I was, <laughs> yeah. 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 But no, I think it's good to come to it. But yeah, so t- it was. Trying to find that halfway point, and a lot of people described it as quite a tribal album as well, sort of musically, especially the drums, very, very and tribal. And the very... song that I want to pick as my pick as well, it's very apparent on that one. But yeah, I think again, a marked, a mark, market, a marked evolution of the band. Again, another step. Mm-hmm. They're not. I know people make the joke of oh, the song, the hit of Disturbed, which is very funny. You know, yeah, even, even Disturbed find that funny. Yeah. yeah. 
But every album has its own unique identity. Every album yeah, has its yeah. own sound. And every album is trying to do something different to the previous one. Mm. Um, I would argue. I would agree. But, yeah, so 10,000 so 10, Fists, what does it mean to us, if anything? It was probably... It was my first album I bought. I'd, I'd, like I say, I'd, I'd kind of dropped up. out at this point. Mm. Uh, it wasn't until download 2008 when I saw them for the first time on the, which would have been the Indestructible Tour that I started listening to it again because I thought I'm going to see them I, I don't want to be one of them guys in the crowd that don't know other than Sickness yeah, yeah. and the odd song that I'd listened to properly on Believe um, so I did I did listen to them then uh, I, I did I really liked 10,000 Fists and again I get that when Bruce says scream for me Donington and you're doing that back to him when he's you know 10,000 Fists it's something that you just latch onto and you need to do it. It's incredible. I, I, I like Stricken, and I think that's just because of guitar because it was really, really fun. A lot of people got soft spot because of Stricken, yeah. Not, really, really fun to play. I was never fussed about it when I first heard it. No, it's, it's I, really become a favourite. And you I always say it's one of his best. best. It's what I think I think Stricken as a solo, that is one of his best solos. Yeah. Yeah. But I think he, Dan did, like, certainly on, on Sickness, Dan didn't, he wasn't a, Twiddly, really twiddly guitarist. It, no. was, it was a new metal guitarist that just did the new metal chuggy. On Sickness, he did a lot more of the post production stuff. He did yeah. a lot of um, what the band know as the Dan Donegan Orchestra, which yeah. is Dan sat with a keyboard, like going, "Oh, we can make this noise, and they can yeah. do that noise, and they can do this noise." So Dan did a lot of that on uh, Sickness, and didn't really do that for Believe or Fisk. Came back for Indestructible, yeah. but yeah, so he's, he's focusing much more on his guitar playing. Yeah. I think it shows. It does. It's, yeah, it's some of his best guitar playing. I really liked. On, on, on listening to it again, uh, I don't know if I'd have picked it a bit first time. I really like Sons of Plunder this time around. Sons of Plunder's a good song. I really did like it. I like Forgiven, but I think that's because that to me is all disturbed. That sounds. It's, it's a harken back. It to that. sounds very much. Not like Sickness. I would imagine that's somewhere between Sickness and Believe, but uh, that sort of area. And then I, 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 again, listening back to it this time, I like Sacred Lie. I think it's, it's really good. Song. good. I think to be fair, I think they're all good songs. I think the only song that isn't a a great song. I think I said this to you the other day. I think the Sturds only ever recorded one bad song, and we will get to it when it comes up. But I think the weakest song on that album is um, Avarice. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's very I'm much. You pick the one song that I, that I'm picking. What Avarice? No. Oh, right. I'm sorry. I'm glad you didn't. Pick uh, it. Avarice. Where are you going with this? <laughs> Avarice is the one song that on that album. Mm feels like, oh, this is a Disturbed song. This is a By The Numbers Disturbed. Yeah. Fi- we're filling in time because we want to have another track on this album. Yeah. That's the only, and that's why it's kind of sandwiched before. It's not the end of the album. It's just before the end of the album. It's definitely mm. buried in there. One of my favourite tracks is Decadence. Because mm. again... Okay. It, now you have picked my favourite song. Uh, again, because it's got the heaviness, but it's also it's really strong. It's unusual. Yeah, it's an un- unusual song for them, relatively. But yes... Yeah, so, um, if I had to pick a song for Ten Thousand Fists, I think I'll have to pick the title track, Ten Thousand Fists. I think it's got to be, it's got to be it's on there. It's on the list. It's got to be on there. It's, as a, again, as a call to arms, as mm. a unifying song, I don't think Disturbed have really gone much better. Well, mine's decadent then. I'm gonna go with Sacred Lie. I think. Nice choice. Was it? Nice choice, Sacred Lie. Nice choice. Again, it's, uh, uh, no. again. Uh, I said I've listened to them all recently. I've I've tried, gone back through and I've made me notes of, of certain things and stuff like that. So I get, it might not have been on the original time I liked it because I was very much I, as much as I liked Prayer when the song came out, mm. I was like, this is not disturbed. This is not a sickness. And I I did kind of shut off from them really quickly. Mm. And it wasn't until I got with Emma and she really liked Liberate from that album. Mm. I, I'd sort of give it a bit more of a, a chance, but. See, just don't be so judgmental, Rob. That's, well, what, that's what this lesson teaches you, isn't it? <laughs> well, albums that I said were no good have mm. moved up quite drastically. So. Well, yes, yeah, so on to the next point. So, Indestructible, which Indestructible. is album number four, which for a long time you hated. I did hate. You hate. Absolutely. I, I will say this now. This is my number one. Number one. I think it's my number two. It's, for me, again, this kind of harkens back to our slip. It's my story. number three. Okay. Interesting. I'm just saying now, I'm not willing for them to move. No. <laughs> um, but for me, so again, going back to what we said about Slipknot, I was comparing the self title to Iowa, and I said about how I was almost an uncontrolled rage and uncontrolled, very mm. unfocused anger. 
to me, that's what I always feel like the sickness is. A very unfocused, very kind of, we're angry at the world and, you know, I'm gonna, I'm mad, I'm mad as hell. And, uh, I, don't I want what, the world to know, know about, about it. it. Yeah, that type of thing. Whereas Indestructible, I felt they'd really focused that anger. Mm. They'd really focused that rage. Proof in point is the fact that there's two songs on there that are hangovers from Sickness. sickness mm. yeah. And they re-recorded them. Perfect they Insanity. De- Perfect Insanity and uh, Divide. Divide? Decide. Divide. Divide. That's uh, one of the ones. That yeah. But again, it proves how far they've come as a band because they've re-recorded these songs and they've made them better. Mm. Perfect Insanity, they did release on like an early version of Sickness. Special Sing. edition. Special one. edition of Sickness yeah. and it was an early demo. But just comparing that to the version on Indestructible, it's, it's night mm. and day. It's just a stronger... Oh, there, was Deceiver, there was Deceiver or Divide. Divide. Uh, that one. Divide. It's Divide. Divide. Yeah. Divide. 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 Yeah, so it proves how much they focus, they're channeling that rage, they're mm. channeling that anger. It came out in 2008. Correct. And I, I, I would argue it was their best album they've ever recorded. You know what, what we were talking about, uh, Slipknot, and uh, in, in a previous episode where we were talking about how... Uh, where you are at the time, mm. I see. And I'd when when Indestructible came out, um, I wouldn't say I'd gone off them quite like you mm. had in that interim time, but I just didn't listen to them as much. Um, so when Inside the Fire, which was the first single, Inside the Fire was the first single. Um, I heard that and I was like, this is incredible. But talking about where you are, sort of mentally and, and what's happening. We were at college when it mm-hmm. came out. We were in his first year. Mm-hmm. And we get me to go on tour with the BFG, and I remember specifically go uh, on tour with the BFG. That sounds so much grander than it actually fucking yeah. was. <laughs> <laughs> it was grand. It was grand. Sorry, um, this was the year I started. So I'd got at our place of work. Is it mm. you poor sod? Yeah. <laughs> I'd I'd got sort of like a, a a semi-serious girlfriend for the first time in my mm. life around that time. It's the first time me and you properly bonded. Yeah, first time. Yeah, we'd, we'd, obviously we'd always been friendly with each other, but when yeah, that came out, we yeah, bonded, we, that was when we, we bonded start, over this. That's when we started to become really close as friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I remember sitting outside the factory on them side doors, listening, showing Jim the Christ. bass solo in Inside the Fire oh. at the end, and 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 he was listening to it, just being like, yeah, "It's all right." I mean, you were like, "It's great, great. Into it, into it. <laughs> But we went to Graves Park. Do you remember one of those times? We went to Graves Park a lot. We played Bulldog and drank and, and whatever. Again, we did that a lot. And me and you just listened to this album a lot. <laughs> what are the standout tracks is inside the phone? Well, that, that is their tribute to Pantera. Mm-hmm. Because at the end, it's not a guitar solo, it's a guitar versus bass duel. Yeah. So that, that was their little tribute to Pantera. Because cause David was a very big fan of Dimebag. Yeah, he very, was very, very big fan of Dimebag. Didn't, didn't they dedicate this album to Dimebag? Pretty much. They, they used to play Walk. That used to be part of their mm. set. Uh, they retired it after Dimebag died. Because they actually played it live with Dimebag quite a few. They normally only, to be fair, they normally only played it if Dimebag or Vinny were in the house. Yeah. Because um, there's a great video of, I'm sure seen it online somewhere, of them playing Walk and Vinny comes up behind Mike and starts playing drums with Mike on Walk, which is quite a cool, which is quite a cool little... Because cool. um, that was with... Oh, what was what band was Vinny at that point? Because it was after Pantera. It wasn't yeah. in... Uh, it would have been in... Well, what uh, year are we talking about? It's like 2002 era. I know, it's, it, it was in between... Because Damage Plan were formed in 2003. 3-4, four. Four, yeah. Yeah, they, they formed in 3 and ended in 4 because they were literally yeah. only touring for a year. So Matt, it, it's, that, it's that period. It was Vinny, Vinny wasn't in Damage Plan, was he? Yeah. yeah. Oh, was Vinny in Damage Plan as well? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know and that. Once, I forgot once, that, once Dow had been killed, mm. he'd then joined Hell Yeah. Yeah, because they, they split off. Because uh, Rex and Phil went to down, mm. and they from damage. I did, I thought it was just. I thought it was just. Vinny. They, I, I, I don't. I, I don't believe up until the point that Dimebag was killed. Mm. I don't believe that they, if they went and did anything, they mm. did it together. Right. Whatever band Vinny was, was in, Dime was in. Whatever band Dime was in, Vinny was in. You got. You got the other yeah, brothers. You got, you got the brothers. You didn't um, get one of them. So yeah, so inside the fire is their little is their little tribute, and I think that's probably why it's one of their strongest songs because mm-hmm. they're channeling one of the you know potentially one of the best bands. But but also the the mm. lyrical content for it is again about they're maturing, they're getting darker. Um, the whole thing about him walking in and finding well, it's based his on a true girlfriend. Story. That's how comfortable they're getting in the band. He has David's had a rather not a hard upbringing, but he was starting to come. He was starting to bring out more traumatic things from his life, uh, and so this is a true story of. Him walking, basically, him walking in on his dead girlfriend, 
who hung herself. So who, who hung herself or killed some? I don't think actually. I know it's hung in the it's video. In the video, yeah. I don't know what it actually is. Um, and basically, a conversation he has in his head with the devil, trying to tell him to commit suicide so he could join her again. Which is where you know to join her inside the fire. It, it, yeah. Again, we going back to something you've said in a previous episode about that when you were talking about snuff. It's the heaviest disturbed song. Oh no, my child. I'd argue some top three heavy disturbed songs. Yeah. And in that respect, top three heavy songs. So yeah, it's just from start to bottom. There's not. There's no filler on that album. I would argue there's no filler on Indestructible. It's such a. It's album. a strong album, I remember start to end. On my nineteenth birthday. Going to, uh, we went to Cup and I was I went down to Twickenham the next day for the mm. Fairbold uh, Maiden Made an show. show, yeah. And you'd got it on, you got an MP3 player that could play videos, and you got the night. <sighs> the night is the it's how good the night is. The night was originally the name of the album. That's how you strong. got the night video and your thing, and you showed me that. So we made a point of asking DJ to play it on my nineteenth birthday. The night is yeah. Cool. The, the night, night's one of the ones that the I would night, recommend. I I'm saying this now. The night is the best song Disturbed have ever recorded. Well, I was going to say all on that one because we we can't really talk about masks like we did with Slipknot. So let, we'll discuss best and worst Disturbed songs at the end. Okay, okay. But that's how strong the night was. It was indestructible. Then obviously. They wanted to make another, and th- like ten thousand of this, another call to arms. You know, we are, you know, we are indestructible. Almost a bit of a fuck you at the critics. You know, trying to bring them down. Mm. You know, no, no, we are indestructible. Um, but yes, yeah, so what are the standout tracks that people got from Indestructible? Divide, Deceiver, uh, uh, Enough, Torn. I liked all them. They were what mm. I. I don't know if it's my favourite Disturbed song of all time, but Indestructible is definitely up there as one of my favourites. I love it's the title just, track you c- as a sing along. That is incredible. I love Indestructible. Again, it might even be my favourite. I've not decided. The staccato vocals were back. It was very mm. rhythmic. Do, 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 do. It was oh, it's perfect. I loved the the air raid siren intro as well. The yeah, kicking going into it. it. So what 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 tracks are people picking? Um, I'm going to pick Perfect Insanity or Indest- I'll go with Indestructible since I've mentioned it. Already. Okay, I'm going with Divide. As much as I love Inside the Fire, I can't not pick the night. I can't say that it's the best. About that, I can't say it's the best song they ever recorded and not put it on the playlist. Exactly, as yeah. fantastic as Inside the Fire is, and yours was divide. Yeah, the the night is just. It shows how good a lyricist David is. It shows how good a guitarist Dan is. Mm. It show, it just as a band they're working as a well oiled machine by Indestructible. Then comes Asylum, which is two thousand and ten. Which is the fifth album and the last album they did before they went on hiatus. Again, we went to go see them at the GMEX in Remember, Manchester. Yeah. Manchester Central. Manchester Central. It's not now. It's not uh, been GMEX for years. No. <laughs> it's still known as the GMEX. It's like yeah. the Manchester, it's still it's like the Manchester Arena is no longer sponsored by the Evening News, but it's still known it's as the MBN Arena. Yeah. <laughs> but that was also the same tour. It was the case, Taste of Chaos tour where they were technically joint headliners with Papa Roach. Were they joint headliners or were they just made no, parks? No, because the they did the same length of set. All right. Same. Papa Roach were on first with the same like set. But yeah, so Salem came out and they were starting to, I would argue, starting to get a bit complacent, starting to go kind of, oh, we can just do a Disturbed album. It's also the second album they self-produced. Indestructible was the first album they self-produced. Then he did it again with Asylum. It was also a bit of a landmark album for them because it was they've been together 10 years at this point. So it was a bit of a celebration of them being together as a band for so long. And I believe, uh, I can't which song it is off the top of my head, but there is a song on there that is another hangover from The Sickness Days. I can't which song it um, is. I want to say Criminal, but I don't think that's no, right. Criminal's off uh, other album, off last album. It is, you're right. But there is a song, I'm sure there's a song on Asylum, that they may it's, they may not even demoed it on Sickness. That's how it Warrior? No, it's not Warrior. Because that's one they still play, isn't it, Warrior? No, Animal's the, on, oh, Animal's no. the only Warrior. Yeah, that's I it. thought Warrior were terrible. Animal's not great though, is it? Animal well, is the Serpentine, Serpentine Warrior, My Child, Sacrifice, Innocence, Ishvilf, and Ultra. It might be. It might be Innocence actually. It might be, be. To be strange because there's another one of mine. I think it might be Innocence. That's a Hangover. From I think, like I said, I was I was saying to you the other day. I probably, probably shouldn't have done this with Slipknot and then straight into Disturbed mm. because I did the Slipknot ones and got into the angry, aggressive mood. Mm. 
and then when I've now gone to Disturbed, I've gone, I want those, I want those songs there. It's a bit more of a complaint, not com- uh, contemplative. Out the mm, contemplative. That's the one. They did that word that I can't say. Um, yeah, it's a bit more of a contemplative album. Um, much more. You still didn't stick with that. No, no, I didn't. But I was trying to brush over it so you don't notice. But thanks for that. Um, <laughs> you divvy. <laughs> Um, but again, but then saying that, I think lyrically and subject matter, it's got two of the heaviest, you know, darkest songs. Of My Child, which is about, um, again, the experience David had, which is losing a child, uh, I don't know if it was in childbirth or, mm. you know, earlier. And, you know, it has the lyric, why was it only in death where you redeemed my child? Mm. It's like, okay, that's... Um, that's horrendous. Yeah, that is horrible. That and there's, It starts with a heartbeat and a baby crying. Yeah. That's, and it's... It's grim. It's horrible to listen. It's to. grim. I mean, it's powerful. It's powerful. And it's emotional. It was and, one of the one of the standout ones that I've. And so. then never again. Which, as a song about the Holocaust, is actually quite uplifting because it's, it's, yeah, it's a fuck you to the Holocaust deniers and people like that. You know. Exactly, yeah. I also want to notice towards the end. As, for all the countless souls who have died, let our voices fill this night. We say never again. Mm. Which is, I don't know, as a song about Holocaust can be. Again, it's another anthemic. It's all you know, right. Yeah, it's we're all coming together to you know, moment. Yeah, we're all we're all coming together to unite in our sadness almost, and unite in our grief. And that's, uh, yeah, that's but a also as a as a, a statement to never allow it to happen yeah. again. And let's let's learn about this, you know, otherwise we're doomed to repeat it. Which is saying. ballsy for a band to do when you think about it to take that it's, type of I subject matter. Think there's there's something about his his Jewish heritage and his in terms of the the, the singing that he does and the the subject matter. It feels in keeping. No, but it, it, it speaks a lot about his Jewish heritage mm. when it comes to the influence he has when it comes to songwriting, his approach to singing, obviously, in uh, in synagogues and what have you, singing is an important mm. part of the process, like it is in many religions. Well, Stupefy's Stupify, got a bit of traditional Jewish singing, isn't it? Mm. You know, he's always, oh, yeah. always yeah, the, the, uh, it's almost like a. Um, well, it sounds like a prayer. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I don't know, but it's, to me, it sounds like a prayer, and I think that's probably the they were going for. Yeah. So yeah, even though he might not be particularly religious anymore, it's, you can tell he still mm. had a big impact on his mm. life, and st- to this day, it's still influencing what he does. Yeah. Um, no, but I mean, we mentioned it already with my love for the intro to a to an opening opening track, and this is not just. This is not just the hearing aspect of it. This is then also seeing it live as well. And although it's probably a, a low-ranking album overall, yeah, sod, uh, sod, rap, sod, indestructible, asylums, possibly. If you compare, if you if you latch it on with remnants, the song, yes, remnants into asylum. Then also latch on the visuals that we saw. At yeah, because uh, so you saw. Yeah, you saw one that download saw, that whole 11. thing where this. It was all like, like a Michael Myers thing. They were taking yeah. him out at asylum. Because mm. it was a video a backdrop mm. of them trying to get him out, and then they wheel him out, don't they? Well, no, no, oh, no, no, you no, ran no, out on this one. On this one uh, certainly at GMX, they loaded him into the back of ambulance. He went full psycho in the ambulance. Killed the paramedics who were working on him. I might be mixing up the first got class over out, the Got out of the ambulance, ran off shot, and then ran on stage as Asylum started with the do 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 with the bass. Mm. And that is, that's, you know, the people that talk about WrestleMania moments. Yeah. This is a metal moment for me. That's a core memory. Yeah. <laughs> it's, no, it, it was great. It was and again, another, another Pantera tribute with that, that yeah. bass line is very, yeah, yeah. very sort of gro- groove metal, as it were. Yeah. yeah. Remnants into Asylum is some of Disturbs best work mm. without comparison I really liked Imperfection it's pretty good and it weren't particularly well received but the other single Another Way to Die I really liked it because it, and I've spoke about it before mm. with uh, with with albums um, inspiring me in terms of like writing and what have you with the opening sort of with twiddly riff bit for mm. um, I don't know the technical term for for another way to die put me in mind of the 80s view of the end of the world mm. that that's inspiring from a from a writing point of view it's, it's like municipal waste toxic yeah. sludge city mm. type stuff it's, another way to die is a song that when it first came out i wasn't that bothered about it's definitely grown on me as years mm. have gone on i've kind of i've got i've got a new appreciation for another way to die it's, again it's, it's, it's just a good hard rock song i think, I think it's for me it's very similar not in the the, the lyrical theme whatever but it reminds me a lot of Ten Thousand Fists. It's got that same sort of yeah. You think? I see that. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't mean like a, I don't mean like it's a carbon copy of that song. Mm. I just mean it's got the same sort of 
bounce to it. It's got the same sort of... It's, uh, it's, okay. a, it's a wider view of the world yeah. as opposed to like a personal issue. Or, mm. or, or, yeah, again, I think they're trying to use their anger and their rage for like, going, like, we, we, as a, we as a people need yeah. to be angry about this topic. Yeah. You, know, and it, you know, fair play to a hard rock band trying to do a song about, you know, protecting the earth. You know, not going to become a hard rock band though now. Aren't they? not yeah, that, that was the point I was going to make. They sort of developed from new metal and now they're... I don't mean this is a dig at all, but they're now sort of generic hard rock, yeah. heavy metal type thing. And I don't mean that's a dig in the slightest. I don't mean it's a dig because I think I think Stone Sour did that. Mm. I think Stone Sour. Well, they were new metal. Stone Sour. They weren't new metal, but they were. I think bother and not bother. Uh, the Stone Sour first album was metal, and then I think yeah, now they're the, the more hard rock. Yeah, they, well, they, or they were before they called yeah. it. I'm, I'm assuming they've called it a day now. Stone Sour. Saying Cortez doing his own project with oh. most of Stone Sour. Yeah, <laughs> I like <laughs> Sacrifice and Innocence. Sour. Yeah, yeah. I think we've covered my favourite ones off that one. Obviously, Revenant, Into Asylum, um, I really like Another Way to Die, mm. Never Again. Serpentine's one. great. Serpentine's mm. great. And My Child. So what? What are you pick? What are you picking as your song then? I'm picking. I'm, t- I'm picking two Revenants Into Asylum. <laughs> I'm allowed to do this because they are only good with the two together. You need them together. You need them together. I don't care what anybody says. That's what's happening. Roberto. I'll fight you. Uh, infection, the infection. It's going to have to be my child. It's, it's heavy as balls, but yeah. it's going to have to be my child. Infection. And Again, lyrically, it's heavy. Child. Again, musically, it's not the heaviest they've gone, but I think. Yeah, definitely. So they had a hiatus yeah. for a few years, uh, and then they came back with Immortalized in 2015. Well done. Well done. I know this. Well, living in London. You, okay. you were. I remember because it came out when I was like, when I was when I had my three months at Weatherspoons. Yes, I remember. <laughs> uh, just sorry, just a, a very brief dip back into Asylum. Best album cover they've had. No. Asylum is their best album cover. No, I would disagree. What's yours? The special edition of Indestructible. <laughs> Which one was that one? I shall show you. Because is, is that the one? Because he owns it. Because I own it. Because the Indestructible just had the guy on it, didn't it? Um, yeah, the, the normal cover. That is my favourite. Yeah. Even the special back, edition. Even, even the back, allowed to have special yeah. edition. No, no, no. Standard release. Oh no, but you just said in general they're best. Uh, if we're going for, I think sickness is the worst. To be fair. Um, no evolution because he just says evolution. Well, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Um, in that respect, then I say if I have to choose out the normal ones, I'd say immortalised. I think either immortalised or ten thousand fists. Immortalised is quite reminiscent of Power Slave, isn't it? A little bit. I'd say more somewhere back in time because you know when Eddie's popping out of the, um, of the I don't know, it's all stone. I know, but I just, I don't know. I don't know, what was the point? Immortalised, yes. Yeah, Immortalised. Yeah. So just, again, just yeah. really briefly, I have only listened to Immortalised and Evolution once, so okay. I'm not going to be a, as a font of all knowledge of this point. So Immortalised was their big comeback after five years away. Well, five years not in Disturbed. They were all doing their own things at that point. They weren't always... Did John go back to Union Underground? Or did he no. do Adrenaline Mob? Did Adrenaline... Uh, fight or Flight was... Fight or Flight was Dan and Mike yeah. and then David did Device, Device, also known as Disturbed with more techno. Yeah. Which, you know, it was sad because they dropped out of um, supporting Avengers Sevenfold. However, it meant they got Avatar and I discovered Avatar, yeah. which, you know, so that was a good thing. And do you listen to Device today? Or do you listen to uh, I listen Avatar? listen to Avatar today, not <laughs> Device. It was when they went, oh yeah, Device, it's stuff I couldn't do in Disturbed. And then everyone went, this is Disturbed. This is Disturbed with more techno. Yeah. I think that a bit with some other bands that that's like, oh no, we've got some, like Linderman. Yeah. A lot of Linderman stuff is just Ramstein. Yeah. Not a lot of it much, isn't. Not, <laughs> as much, not as much fire. <laughs> um, so yeah, Immortalized came out um, and I died. I with think it. they really stuck the landing as well. I, as, as a comeback album. I was. Really, I, 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 yeah, they. Really stuck it. Again, listening to it for the first time in the last few days. They Again, they'd all matured as. Artists, they'd all improved their skills. They've come back with a bit of fire in the belt. Yeah, they, yeah, they came back rested and kind of like, okay, we're angry at different things now. Um, we're still angry. We're still angry, but, <laughs> different but we're all, we're all, you know, we've got fam. We, you know, even by this point, even David had a family. Yeah. Because famously, all those were getting married and having their own kids, and there's David going, I have dogs. Uh, <laughs> Is it uh, Sam? Sam Bear. Uh, Sam Bear, I think he's got. Yeah. I don't know if he's got any more kids, but yeah, Sam Sam Bear was born while they yes, were doing we Device, very, very which is why the wife. Yes, who used to be a WWE wrestler? Yarn, Lana, I think she was got the I think she, Not that Lana. No, not that Lana. Um, but she's actually the model on the cover of the Device album. That's her. Uh, I don't think I've met her. Anyway, different different thing altogether. So she came back refreshed, came back 
rejuvenated. And I think it really proves. I think. And which was the first single? Was it because it was either immortalized Ven- or vengeful? Vengeful one was the first yeah, single. Vengeful one. Because they did sort of a tease. Like a lyric video for it. Well, right? they did a tease where the, the website went down, and then it was just. Um, you just saw the guy in like a stasis pod and every day he went back there was just like a heartbeat just playing and it got louder and louder and louder and then when the tease had finished it then went into the Immortalised video and yeah. uh, not also the uh, Ventral One video as well um, Ventral One is cheesy but fun I'd yeah. argue it's it's an old school disturbed song which again which is why it's one of yeah. my recommendations <laughs> Ventral and again there's a good you can imagine the whole crowd singing and the Vengeful World you can, you can hear the what chorus I... It's been sung by everybody. I said this to you the other day. What I liked about it, from what I'd listened to at that point, was I don't. I've not got a problem with David Draymond singing. What I had a problem with, he he went to just singing it, and he lost any sort of gruffness to his singing voice. It's a and with singer, this, so why wouldn't you? and with this one, he brought that little yeah. bit of a not a growl, Edge but back, it's just the, the bite. As yeah, it were. yeah, he brought well, it back. I really and like the Bruce Dickinson solo stuff because there was, yeah. there was that. Ed, you're talking about yeah. any solo mm. stuff. It's yeah. quite abrasive, really. Yeah. But yeah, so Immortal, and then we can't talk about Immortalised without talking about that cover at the end. Um, Don't know what could we talking about, to be honest. Can anybody hear that? <laughs> is it the sound of <laughs> the <laughs> Which, okay, it, it, it's brilliant. It is it's really incredible. Good. It's good. They originally recorded a disturbed version of the sound of silence, like a proper yeah. disturbed, and they all listened to it and went, mine. God, that's shite. Let's, Let's not do that. I think Disturbed are one of the bands that when they do covers, I think they do them very, very well. Uh, yeah, I, their version of Land of Confusion is... I, I'll brilliant. never forget me mum hearing it saying it sounds more like Phil Collins than Phil Collins does. <laughs> on Sound of Silence? Yeah. <laughs> It was weird, really. Have you ever heard Genesis's cover of uh, Sound of Silence? No, thank Christ. <laughs> Have you ever heard Simon and Garfunkel's cover of Land of Confusion? <laughs> I want to. <laughs> Wait, it depends what era Genesis. If it's um, Peter Gabriel Genesis, then I definitely want to hear his version of Sound of Silence. <laughs> but how weird he'd fucking I just remember it. we saw them again in 2016. I've only seen them three times, and every time it's been a download. And when, because obviously all of Disturbed's covers have some disturbedness yeah, to them. Yeah, it's a disturbed yes. version of that song, yeah. So we were watching it, and everyone, I went, this is, this is the latest cover they've done. And she was like, when does it kick in? I went about two minutes ago when the song started. I, I, it's, does anyone remember, everyone remembers where they were when JFK was shot. I remember where I was when that song came out. I was in Croatia. I was in Zagreb mm-hmm. for ice hockey. And uh, we were, I was with, obviously, Becky, Becky's mum and dad. And some friends of ours who were also hockey fans, obviously. And it was actually the, one of our friends who said, oh, there's been a new version of Sound of Silence who was looking at it on his phone. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's by Disturbed. It, it's really good. And there's this incredibly surreal moment sat in this apartment in Zagreb listening to Disturbed with my mother-in-law. <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, I know all of them going... This is really good. These don't sound like a heavy metal band. Well, no, I get it. You're it, talking about your H&B story with old ladies. Oh, yeah, I worked in H&B when this album came <laughs> out. Oh, if I, no, 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 sorry, no. I, I, I worked in H&B when the song came out as a single. Yeah. It's the different... And all these old ladies are going, Oh, I like that sound of silence. It's been on Radio 2. Sam and Mayo's played it a lot. Have you got that album with it on? Yeah, the rest <laughs> of the album doesn't sound like it. Oh, it's fine. It's not for you. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I th- again... Proving just how good they all are as musicians and performers as well. I think it, th- there's some covers that you've got to have balls to take on. Yeah. The so, Chain the, is one of them. The Chain is one of them. And Stand of Silence would be one of them. Yeah, not able to six a landing on the chain. No. <laughs> uh, some Led Zeppelin stuff, if you're going to cover it, you better fucking do Be- it right. Beatles, Be- yeah. Abba, Abba, you've got to do it right. Um, or at yeah. least different enough for it not to be. Yeah, not yeah. Sure. So that's why when Disturbed did their own version of Sound of Silence, they went, "No, this isn't. This isn't good enough. We need to do a tribute to the original." So yeah. that's when they did the acoustic version, and obviously that's it's to the next level popularity wise. I saw them supporting Avenged Sevenfold on this. That's where I saw them on the Immortalized tour uh, over here, and they blew Avenged Sevenfold out of the water. And they were phenomenal that night. Absolutely brilliant. They, they played for support act as well. They played for a lot. They played for over an hour. Mm-hmm. Which for a support act is almost unheard of, which I think proves which I think proves just how big they were. Inflames on that tour, yeah. Inflames opened, and 
I felt sorry for Inflames. They were great, but it was the wrong crowd for them. Mm. Most people who go to the Avengers Sevenfold that aren't bothered by Inflames. Some people, there's obviously some crossover, but I'd say a good eight percent of the audience. Band has got their uh, the roots in basic, basically Swedish melody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they were not. The, I thought I thought Inflames were great, but the rest of the crowd did not agree. Um, yeah, then the stove just blew them out of the water, and then Avengers Sevenfold came. Who was still good, but Disturbed were far yeah. superior that night. Um, but yeah, the immort- immortalized. They came back with a bang. They came back really showing how good they are as a band with the rest. So what? What? What are your tracks? What? What are your standouts? What are you waiting for? But with an honourable mention to fire it up, <laughs> which I hated when I first heard. I hated it. I, I listened. To, I'm again. I've only listened to it once. I, I'm like, no, I'm not having that. That's just yeah. F- no. Fire it up. Fire it up with them trying to prove that they can have fun. Yeah, because um, they are all oh, like, massive potheads. They are massive sort of, potheads. Kind of cringeworthy, actually, in end weren't they? It was also but like, I kind of, li- I kind of like it. Is we, it? We, we smoke weed too. We, yeah, come dance with us. You know, I'm afraid for a good time. <laughs> when I saw it, I, I just wanted it to be uh, the chant, uh, uh, the crow. Yeah, fire it up, fire it up. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was really to that. not. To be honest, <laughs> when I heard it, I was uh, struck. Uh, the, the, the image that came to my mind was Doctor Evil uh, when he's trying to come across as. I can be hip. <laughs> 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 Give me a hug. Uh, immortalized, like, I like that. Vengeful mm. one. And then Never oh. Wrong. Never Wrong's great. Never Wrong is them, for me, releasing a little, is them loosening up a little bit, you know, unrestrained anger a little bit more, which is what I think mm. I quite like. No, I, I remember being in my, in my tiny little apartment in Muswello listening to what you're waiting for and thinking, this is good. This is mm. amazing. Honourable mention to the lights as well because that was something, uh, and I, you'll probably disagree, but it, it's sort of delving into that something you see more and more on evolution. Uh, yeah, evolution. it's the start it's of a, that. Yeah, it's a, a wholesome song. Mm. Yeah, but live again, talking about on album versus live, the thing oh, everyone the, li- the light was there. brilliant. Live, the light, yeah, because so, now they've now got that sort of mellow set, whole section of their set, mm. right? Sort of, it's got the light, hold on to the well, memories, think, uh, sound of silence, and. Uh, Reason to fight. Yeah, it's, 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 it's sound of silence, sound of silence, reason to fight, the light, and hold on to the memories. It's all their slow section. And hold now. on to memories was beautiful in Manchester because they got pictures of David with Dime Bag and Vinny. Mm. And what have you Chester, because Chester hadn't long died. Chester, yeah, mm. recently. Yeah, he hadn't long died when we saw him. Yeah. Um, we're, we're jumping ahead of ourselves. Mm. Yes. Uh, so so what, are we, what are we saying for Immortalised? What are you waiting for? Okay. Just going on the list. Never wrong. Uh, then I will pick the self. I will pick the title track "Immortalized." As as good as "Sound of Silence" is, it is fantastic. It's not really what we like Disturbed for. And as it, good as it is, and it, it, but it comes under its own category. It's something that you wouldn't you wouldn't even mm. like. You say you wouldn't class. You, obviously, it's Disturbed, but you you discuss it. In I a think the only conversation yeah, to disturb. cover of Disturbed that I would absolutely one hundred percent put on that is "Land of Confusion." That would be the only... Yeah, because they've kind of made that that is their own yeah. song now. Whereas a lot of people like that because they like the original version as well, whereas Land of Confusion is their own version of that and it's become them. So then we move on to the latest release, um, album-wise, which is Evolution, which came out in 2018. Yes. Seven for, seven, seven for seven. Which was... For me, them trying to the, the new fan popularity they had from the mainstream and a lot of casual fans mm. who'd come back to them and a lot of people who'd never heard of Disturbed were starting to be inter- interested by them. They tried to appeal to every market I found on Evolution. I thought they were trying to please everyone instead of and I, instead of a specific group of people and that can end with some bands when pleasing no one. I think Disturbed managed to stick the landing slightly. I wouldn't say it's a strong... I think it's got some great stuff on there, but I would argue it's not there strongest release I like it more than last album uh, but then I'm, I'm, I've something I've discovered about myself recently is I do love a ballad there's nothing wrong with hear, ballads there's nothing and to wrong. hear one of the bands that I really like We Disturbed doing those ballads and doing them mm. in, in such an emotionally evocative way as well to the point that seeing I know Sound of Silence got you this time mm. but it were reason to fight that got me yeah I got quite emotional during um, Sound of Silence when we saw it live yeah, yeah. It's because Reason Reason to Fight was also quite emotional, but Sound of Silence was very emotional. And Hold On to Memories, although it was was quite sad seeing Fallen Heroes, Mm. if you like, Mm. on that that backdrop, Um, it's an uplifting song, isn't it? It's talking Mm. about how, um, you know, 
if, if we've got to keep talking about these people and celebrating these people Don't and talking it. about you know it's not just a case of oh remember those guys they were cool it's more a case of let's celebrate Dimebag let's mm. celebrate Chester let's celebrate everything that makes yeah, us who, all who they are who we are and yeah. all that D- so don't it, mourn the death celebrate so the life it was thing. on that part of the spectrum of uh, of Disturbed it doesn't it doesn't hit the same way as Reason to Fight because mm. it's a, an uplifting song whereas Reason to Fight although it's got uplifting elements it's quite which again I didn't I didn't like when it first came out <sighs> Reason to Fight it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic song but I, but, I, but I loved Are You Ready when that was first released and you weren't as I, keen because I, I remember watching it at work yeah we, yeah, we did <laughs> I remember I showing you so, so I, and I was going it's amazing like, don't be a dick <laughs> Hey, what standouts for you? I've only got three, mm-hmm. uh, and they are: Are you ready? No more, and in another time. Okay, well, that's an interesting pick. I yeah, the standout for me is best. What the best ones lie? I really like that one. I can't read my writing. What I put? I think no, I put no more. I had no more. Yeah. For me, I think that they've gone too far into the mellow side mm. on that album for me. That's what I mean. It's, it's half kind of old-ish disturbed, yeah. half new disturbed. And it doesn't quite I, work for me. If, if they're going to continue down that vein, then I don't think I will listen to them for much longer as new stuff. I will mm. continue to listen to the back catalogue, but I will. I don't think mm. I'd carry on. Well, they're saying the new album, obviously it's not out yet, uh, they're saying the new album will be closer to their older stuff than the newer stuff. But obviously all bands say stuff like yeah, that. We're going, we're going back to the old I school. I said first, the start of Hear You... Mm. Does very much sound yeah, like an old. He's very old. Oh, every album since IO has been. Oh, it's going to be like IO. Right? Yeah, that's true. That is true. Yeah. Is it though? You know. And I'd, every every Metallica album is the new black yeah. black album, isn't it? Yeah. I'd, I I would be happy with a mix of Evolution and Immortalized if that's if that's the way they're going to go mm. forward. Mm. More Immortalized than there is on Evolution. I think you would agree with that though, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah. If they, uh, I'd rather them go. Close to immortalized yeah. evolution. I don't mind a mixture of them too. I, again, I think the the frame of mind I was in trying to do this list has probably clouded me slightly because mm. I was in more of an ag- aggressive mood, and there's, mm. to me, there's not a lot of aggression on evolution. Mm. I, there is mm. some, but there's not yeah, a lot. Yeah, no, no, I, I, and I, I like. I, I prefer even going like the. I prefer the, the more aggressive stuff. Anyway, mm. I'm not a. I'm not a ballady type person and I'm certainly not a ballady type person when it comes to Disturbed yeah I, 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 it, it weren't a, it weren't a bad album it, it's, it, it's my bottom album I've... so so what what picky, what song are you picking uh, Reason to Fight okay I think I'll pick Are You Ready I'll go no more then which is good because they are all my three picks <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy with that so that that is that is fine. But yeah, again, like we said with Slipknot, and like we said with Ghost, and like I'm sure we'll say with most bands, we'll do this mm. with. Not every band will have this have this caveat. But I don't think the Disturbed have done a bad album. No, and and certainly with the excuse the pun, the divisive uh, contention between the most recent effort and the last one. Mm. How you two prefer Immortalized? I prefer Evolution. I like the mix. I like that 50 mm. 50 mix mm. of the. Because I do love. Yeah. Mm. Really. I, I like stuff that makes me feel stuff. But, but then by the same token, I, I like all the AOR stuff. I like Journey and Foreigner and stuff like that. So I do like that That's side. It's all uplifting, though. It's, it's uplifting. But I, I, I don't know. I, I don't like it in, in metal bands, I, mm. I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Like Stone Sour, they did. Bother on the first one and threw glass on the second one, and that were about. I didn't need much more than that. Mm, that was enough, yeah. Yeah, if they'd have put another, if they'd have put bother and threw glass on the first one, and then they'd do the two or three on the second one, I, mm. I'd have been a bit more. Mm. Let's get back to what we. Again, though, if I think back through Stone Sour stuff, bother, through glass, hesitate, song three, all oh, up there's some of my favourite songs. Hesitate, hesitate is beautiful. Hesitate. Bother and through glass are in Stone Sour Run. They are for me. They're mm. up there. They are mm. up there. But Miracles is pretty good as well. To be fair, Enjoy. Miracles. Miracles. But then again, Audio Secrecy is my favourite Stone Sour album. Come by the way for me. Yeah, I stopped listening after Come by the way. Stone Sour. Stone Sour is a debate for a different time. <laughs> That's certainly one we could do though. Really. I think we could do Stone Sour. Four or five yeah. albums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so right now to now to rankings and I, yeah. This is going to be tough. This is going to be tough. This, this is going to be tough. tough. So, 
I'm going to take a wild stab in the dark and say Rob's number one is sickness. My number one is sickness. What is Jacob's number one? Picking for myself, it is also a sickness, but because I got stuck on that album, um, but I would put Indestructible on such a such a close second that I'd be happy either way. It is indestructible for me. I like I can't find you said this earlier, but for me, it's the fact that the rage and the anger is channeled and focused, mm. and sickness it felt a bit wild in places and a bit. I'm not saying it's bad because sickness is still in my top three. In fact, sickness is my number two. But I just yeah, it more flies. So it's sorry, indestructible. It was just all the way through. It was channeled. It was focused. It was every song is brilliant. I can't mm. pick a bad song for that. I, I will listen to one of the few albums I'll listen to start to finish and go back again Sickness I can't do that with even with Sick I'll, I will happily knock out um, Numb on maybe one or two of those as well if I'm being really harsh but Indestructible I will just go round and round and round mm. um, what about number twos so you so Sickness and Immortalised uh, mm. uh, uh, Immortalised uh, Indestructible Indestructible yeah my number two is 10,000 Fists Mm, very told very, you my order had changed based very, on very very interesting it will be my number three. three fist is my number six that's a fist is right down the bottom for me fist is right down the bottom I think this is going to be even harder to this do. is going to be hard. number three it is because we've we've got an absolute fan in the mix of this one we're all not casual to Slipknot yeah. but nobody is that's my band that's yeah I would say that Trivium probably are that band for me. But we haven't recorded that one yet. No, but, <laughs> but my favourite Trivium album, I'm not even sure what that is at this point. Well, I think I've got my favourite and what I think their best album is. Mm. There's, diff- there's a difference. Is yeah. this this is your this is what you think their best album is? This is what is. I think the best album is. So what's, what's your favourite is Believe? My favourite favorite is Believe, but Believe is not no. even in the top three of what I think their best album is. So what is number three for everyone? Uh, 10,000 fists really. fists fists and it's immortalised indestructible, indestructible. indestructible so those two albums that I said I didn't really like yeah. moved up to two and three so I, number three for me is immortalised four four would be evolution evolution four is asylum okay number five I've, said, I've already said believe for me um, immortalised immortalised okay uh, six for me is um Ten thousand fists, asylum, belief, and then number seven is asylum, belief, evolution. Right, so we've got quite wildly different it's lists different actually. All the way down as well. Yeah, we've got quite wildly different lists. I again, I've only listened to Immortalized and Evolution once, so I'm not as strong on them. I I really didn't like Evolution, but if I was if I perhaps did this this listening again in a different frame of mind, mm, I might, might change. I might change. I don't think it will, because again, listening round this time, mm. I think believe is such a difference from sickness. It, oh, it is. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's why that's dropped down. I I did like believe it for when I first saw. I did like it, so it would have been higher. Mm. I think originally, if I'd have done this without listening I couldn't have done because I, I didn't listen to the last two but it would have been sickness it would have been it would have been order probably album order no I'd have put asylum above 10,000 fists and then it would have been the last two okay. so it would have been sickness believe asylum 10,000 fists indestructible had I not listened to you immortalized or whatever asylum for me just feels tired it feels really it feels they were they were they, they, were. they were they were burnt out I think by that point mm. I think you know trying to it saved from the bottom of the list because of remnants and asylum but the, again like I said with Iowa the songs that are naff are really naff, mm. I think. The str- some of the strongest stuff they've ever done, like My Child, Never Again, it, it, Actual Asylum, great. But, but the actual the naff oh, songs, yeah. the naff songs. Animal. And, uh, yeah, Animal. Oh, God, the one song they still play, The Animal, is awful. Oh, I can feel the animal inside. It's like what you think a teenage boy wants to hear. By this point, you don't There's need... a wolf to... inside. Yeah, otherwise. it's just... It's still not the worst song they've ever recorded. You should probably get that checked out. That's a medical. Yeah, it's a medical. It's a medical reason that's probably happening. Oh, you, Rob looks confused. No, I'm just just looking at me. That's just his face. Oh, fair. Just looking at my list of standout stuff and seeing whether I, could, I would move anything or change it. Um, Indestructibles will be hard for me to knock off the top spot. I will. Uh, I, and I would, I would knock 
sickness down in favour of it because it's such a close second. It's so close in that I would even be comfortable saying it's a, a first and second, a, a joint first thing. It was purely. The, the, I tell you what it is. The only thing that puts dis, uh, that puts indestructible below sickness for me is the fact that I didn't listen to Indestructible for as long as I listened to Sickness. And that's not because I didn't listen to Indestructible for a long time, because I did for mm. a very long time. But I just listened to Sickness for an abnormal amount of time. I'm just... I, I was, what I was looking at was my 10,000 fists in Indestructible, my, my standouts, and what I, what I think. Because I did... I'd done my listening and then I'd done my ranking really quickly at the end. Mm. So I'm just wondering whether I would actually swap Indestructible and 10th Fist, mm-hmm. which would put my, my Indestructible as my number two, which would agree probably... I, we well, then by consensus then, that would make Sickness one and Immortalise two because Sickness is my number two. So consensus-wise... Well, on averages. On averages, that would make two. Sickness number one and Immortalise number two. Is that a cabin night? Is that a that cabin well. night? I keep saying that in most lives. No. I think as cabin nights, are we happy that's the decision? So sickness. It's about time you had one took off you. That <laughs> now <laughs> we can all be bitter together. Yeah. <laughs> so we're saying sickness is one, and indestructible is two. Yeah. I will say this for indestructible. Indestructible is the only disturbed album that appears on multiple albums you need to hear before you die. Sickness does not. Yeah. No, because sickness is a very of its time specific period of time. Oh. Okay, so now into number three category. Um, so, so what's your number three? Mine would be 10,000 fists. Mine would be 10,000 fists. And mine's immortalised. How close to three is immortalised for everyone? I've got, after three, Mine I've five. got... Mine immortalised is five. I've got evolution next, then immortalised. What's your number four, Rob? Asylum. Okay, so we're starting to, we're starting to struggle quite differently now. Because I think it was, I think the reason why Asylum goes there is because having seen them on the Indestructible tour at Downwood and not really listened to much of the stuff of the later stuff at that point, which was Indestructible and 10,000 Fists, when it got to Asylum, I think, I don't know if Emma bought it or I bought it, but we bought that album, we listened to it a lot. And we listened to a lot of the back catalogue at that point, so oh. it's got a, not a, not a, as special as such but you remember it all yeah um, I'll always again downward I, I went every year from 2004 to 2014 it's a special place mm. so I, stuff I've seen there always kind of sticks in and then I remember seeing them on the uh, the Mort Life tour I've said already that the thing I love about Evolution which is possibly the sticking point certainly between me and you in this one um Oh, well, we both yeah. Why I prefer Evolution over that is because I like the split. Yeah. But Immortalized does have Sound of Silence. It does have the lie, um, which are mm. leaning on that side of that side of Disturbed. So I think, although I definitely do prefer Evolution, I would would be happy to knock that up to four. I just can't have Asylum that high because Asylum has for me the only. Bad song just just mm. ever recorded, so I, I can't think, have I can't have a song. And, it, and like I say, it's saved from bottom by having the best song that Disturbed have ever done. I again. think for me, but the only good song. Uh, I I can't really argue too much about Immortalizer Revolution because I have listened to them once. So if I listen to them more, Immortalize might come right up or Evolution might. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Having not listened to them enough. Mm. You could say that listening to them more would evolve your taste. It may evolve my taste. And then one may become immortalised, in your opinion. One may. I think you're stretching this metaphor very thin now, mate. (laughs) So... I'm trying. (laughs) I'm trying. I I personally think Evolution was the weakest album for me because it's got too much of the melody side to it. Honestly, but on balance. I don't want to argue because I've listened to it once. I'm not... Immortalised or Evolution, I'm I'm not strong about... Asylum is the last album I bought and saw them on that tour. And enjoyed. And enjoyed. I, I can't have Immortalised below in, below Sorry. Asylum. Below Asylum. Um, Immortalised is, a, is just a far stronger album. It's a far stronger album from start to end. <clears throat> it's, 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 a, it's just... It may be 
but I've listened to it once. It would be uncomfortable <laughs> for me to put Asylum above, well, above second to bottom. Above, but it's the the only one it comes above for me is Believe. But, and that's purely because of it having my favourite song. I like I say, I, I, I'm accept, I, even though it's my favourite album, I'm willing to accept quite a few knocks for Believe because I appreciate it's not their strongest. Mm. It's my favourite, but I appreciate it's not their strongest. Would you, on the Asylum thing, mm-hmm. I wouldn't put Evolution above Asylum. Would you? Depending what mood I'm in, I might do. I wouldn't. <laughs> I don't mind knocking Asylum down, but I'm not putting it below Evolution. So, because that would put it on the bottom of my list. So, in in whatever wherever it, wherever it goes, compromise, guys. Like so, it. so, so going bottom up then. We say, are we saying believe is the bottom then? In my opinion, I think that that is the consensus of the Cabin Night, and it is by no means a bad album. No, again, they haven't done a bad no. album. So then, me so, so, up next would be Evolution. It was my third front bottom, so second front bottom is no. In that respect, we're going up. I would say, what's it painful to say? Believe, I'd evolution, have, asylum would still be second to bottom. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I can't. So I believe asylum, evolution, fists. I can't. I can't. I can't. Then obviously, I can't put evolution above asylum. I'm sorry. I <laughs> I can't put that big a gap between asylum and believe. I'm sorry. I can't. There's no the quality. It'd, it'd be a lie to yourself. Yeah, it? I can't. I'm willing to take a compromise and say believe at the bottom if that's what the group is. But there's not. There's not an album. That, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I can't. I can't do that. I can't. I can't do that. I must say on on this argument, I'm in line with what you're saying on this one. Asylum. Right. We did a joint for Slipknot. Joint fifth, fifth then would be Evolution and Asylum. Asylum. Compromise it. I'll go for that. So it would go sickness, indestructible, immortalized. Oh, we haven't actually said where fist is got. Oh no, so it would be sickness immortalized sickness immortalized. Fists. Sorry, sickness indestructible immortalized fists. fists. And then asylum and evolution joint and then believe. That is hard for me to say. I hate that I hate that order. I hate I, that. I still hate Good. The, <laughs> I hate the ghost order. I, I hate the order. Let me, let me, Tingle angrily at let, the let, let, me, let me write it down to make it official. Immortal. No world is is infested Superman better than Meliora. In every it's world not. it is. It, it's just not. It, it, it is. <laughs> no. It is. It's just not. Immortalised. Um, what do we say after immortalised? Fit, was it fists? Are we say after immortalised? Yeah. Sickness yeah. indestructible. Immortalised. Then fists after immo- fists. fists. Yeah, fists after. I said fists third. No. Okay. I've not been paying attention. I could wind it back, but I can't be asked. <laughs> You'll have to wait and see, see if I've quickly changed it without no, because, you. Because I said that I can't. I couldn't really argue for the two of them. This album, this this episode is going to be released, and it's just going to be like one of them really bad cuts. <laughs> into, I do not. <laughs> episode is. Uh, yeah, I agree with you, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for doing my job for me. Um, <laughs> right, that, that that pains me to the, the the top the top three. I'll admit are fine, but then the bottom the bottom half is 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 painful. I will be honest. I am honestly surprised you have put believe that low. I I'll I'll admit I, I'll admit it's not their strongest. I will happily admit it, that it checks out the with bands that you love as well, um, because like with trivia, I've got a favourite, and then I think there's a best. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah the, the best albums are destructible, but I know my favourite is Believe. Mm. They're the two I listen to the most, but I know musically, lyrically, whatever, Believe is not their strongest. Volume I love it. It's an even bigger one. I've got a definite favourite versus what I think their best album mm. is. But that is... Um, yeah, that's that's tough. a tough list to I'm read. I'm closing though. my book because I don't like looking at that list. <laughs> I don't want to look at it anymore. I don't want to look at that list. It's, uh, <laughs> because you've put your name to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you've agreed yeah, to Yeah, I'm releasing, I'm releasing this. Yeah, I'm, ed- I'm editing it. I've got this, this back and editing, which I'm not happy about. Um, but yeah, so that is that is Disturbed. How, right, so we'll quickly say about best and worst. Mm-hmm. I've, I've mentioned it many times, not to say what the song is. I believe the worst song Disturbed have ever recorded is their version of I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For. I think it is atrocious. It is definitely a wet Tuesday afternoon. Oh, we need one more song for the album. Let's quickly do this U2 cover. Which is, why would you cover U2? Because U2 aren't great in the first place. Um, U2 forced music, aren't you? 
Yeah, they literally go, oh, it's on your iPod. Then I actually needed Windows, uh, Apple to release some software to get it off your iTunes, therefore making YouTube a virus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so by that, so any other, so just yeah, it's, it's, it's dreadful. And like I said, I said it earlier. I think the best song they've ever recorded. And it's a close run race, quite two or three songs. It is the night. I think mm. it's just it's a phenomenal song. It's a it's a phenomenal song. It's got so many layers to it. Um, so even like, musically, it's got so many layers to it. You don't even know, there's a, there's a whole piano section in the background mm. that you can't really hear. Mm. But it's just it, without it, it just it just it just sounds weird. But yeah, put the piano section back in, and it's just it's a beautiful song. Uh, worst, I would go with Animal. Animal's pretty Animal, shot. Yeah. Animal's pretty bad. It's probably on the surface just another disturbed song, but yeah, I'd, I'd just because it's the boring point of the set because they insist on playing it. Mm. Best Asylum. Remnants in Asylum. So the same album's got, so the album's got the best and worst on it. Okay, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a good analogy actually. Yeah. That is the very best and the very worst of Disturb. I really, really didn't like Warrior. I thought that was terrible. Mm. I don't know. I don't know what it was about it. I was just like, this is just Warrior. Always struck to me that they were trying to redo Indestructible. Yeah. So we've all mentioned that our worst song or one of our worst songs is from Asylum. So that means you go down to the bottom of the list. Rob, no. why are you fighting for it? <laughs> no, no, no. That means to go down to the bottom of the list. On our Patreon. So the best song is on it as well. Or would you say what? Would you say? No, 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 not mine. Oh. No. Uh, to, I, I mean, just voices. It's a classic. There's a reason it's a classic. <laughs> I can't not. On our soon to be uh, uploaded Patreon page, we can get a bottle of James's tears at this list. <laughs> <laughs> I was crying, ooh-ah, ooh, ah, ooh ah, <laughs> to you too, David, as they, t- as they fall into the bottle. Um, that was hard. That was very, very hard. That, like was, say, that was harder than the other ones we've done. But because Disturb means so much to me. Mm. That was really, really tough. Like, Disturb- no, but, uh, not as much to me, but that was still difficult. I just found it difficult. Mm. Even before we came here today, when I was listening to them, I struggled to play them. My, my, my list for the album's top of my head. I, could, mm. I, I did that. I, I, I could I mean, even really listening to my my uh, my opinion didn't change it was just I know what my well, it could be because I'm just setting my ways but it could also be because I just yeah I don't know but you're not happy with that no I'm not happy with that but you're not happy with Ghost and I think you're happy with Slipknot and when you have to compromise on Metallica when the time comes you'll not be happy yeah. with that either Cause we could, just to annoy you we're making the Black Album number one yeah just to annoy you yeah no no Lulu it's a Lou Reed and Metallica it, album. It's not. It doesn't. Even count. though that'll piss him off, I, I, I still can't. I still can't. <laughs> it, does, it doesn't it's count as a Metallica and album. And I count. am the table. I think we've all disturbed out. You've been great. We've been coming nights. Good night. <laughs>